because of the immense harassment and trolling, it has been hard for me to see the real criticism from the harassment. I have amazing trolls that help me with Jillian stuff. Like they're the best trolls and they know they're trolls and they don't even care that they're trolls, but they are the best trolls. creators. I'm sorry if I said things while under attack that may have been upsetting to you. I am sorry that I hurt your feelings. I, I truly apologize for what I have said or done in response to your criticisms because of these trolls. I have no plans to sue any of you and I hope you can. we can all move forward. Don't join the hate parade. Don't join the mob because the mob that you are in right now is involved in a lawsuit and you don't wanna be a part of that. And if you continue, you will become a part of that. I actually do think Emily is defaming me. I can put a cease and desist on her and I'm asking her to cease and desist. If she wants to continue to do this, she will end up in the countersuit. Creep show, either act like an adult or get out of this chat right now. You are being a bully. You are nothing but a bully. I have never stopped you. Leave me alone. I will get my lawyer to get you in this lawsuit. Leave me alone, creep show. I'm done. Before we get into the video, please do not send hate to anybody mentioned in this video. All opinions are my own and opinions are not facts. Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. So today we are starting part four of the Without a Crystal Ball series, everything surrounding the Toddy Westbrook lawsuit that she filed against Katie Joy and Katie Joy's outrageous behavior ever since she got wind of this lawsuit. So this is a part four. If you have not seen part one, two, or three, I highly recommend watching part one, two, and three before continuing on with part four. And I will link them all in the description box down below. So before we get deep into the video, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new. Turn on all post notifications so you don't miss any uploads in the future. So now that that's all the way, let's do a quick recap in part one. We talked about everything surrounding Katie getting the exclusive with the Tati Westbrook lawsuit that her business partner Clark Swanson filed against her and all the drama that was surrounding that where she was like freaking out over nobody giving her credit. And then in part two, we dove into the lawsuit that Tati Westbrook filed against Katie Joy. We compared videos, we compared tweets, we dissected that lawsuit to see if Tati had a good case for defamation or not. And then in part three, we talked a little bit more about the lawsuit. And then we also dove into all the drama that Katie had created. She was threatening lawsuits against multiple creators. So again, I will link all of these in the description box down below. So the last spot we were at in part three, multiple creators were making videos on Katie about the threat she had been sending their way. Now, before they started making the videos, I talked about in part three, Keemstar pulling his support from Katie Joy. And when he pulled his support from her, we had talked about it before, but she had uh, completely deactivated her Twitter after he dropped his video on his Twitter account. Now in part three, I didn't focus on what happened to Katie after she deactivated her Twitter. So that is where we are going to start.
So Katie deactivated her Twitter for about 24 hours. And in that 24 hours, she removed a lot of stuff on her account. And in the beginning of all of this, she specifically stated that her attorney was advising her to keep everything up because she had nothing to hide. She started deleting tweets. She started deleting videos. And the tweets and the videos that she was deleting were specifically stated in the lawsuit. So what happened after that? Tati's lawyer filed a motion to preserve evidence, which is a legal document that is filed with the court. And in this legal document, it is not another lawsuit. I seen a channel that said something about it being another lawsuit. It is not another lawsuit. It's basically a motion that is filed with the court asking the court to put in place a court order that prevents Katie from deleting evidence online. If you go against a court order, there's usually repercussions if you go against it. So we're going to take a look at the motion and we're going to take a look at what the court ordered in this motion to preserve evidence. Okay, guys, so this is the first page of the document. It was filed on November 4th, 2020. And basically, it just states who the plaintiffs are, who the defendants are, the type of motion it is, and a little bit about Tati's attorney's office. And then on pages two and three is what I want to focus on. So let's get into page number two. And this is what it states. Within a half hour of the complaint being filed on Friday, October 30th, 2020. So he's talking about the lawsuit. Once he filed it, he sent a copy of the complaint and a preservation of evidence notice to defendant Katie Joy via email. The preservation of evidence notice expressly instructed defendants to preserve published content related to my clients including without limitation, quote, social media posts, comment on social media posts and videos and videos, live chats, direct messages, instant messages, emails, phone messages, and text messages, end quote. The notice further requested that the defendants, quote, preserve as evidence any content related to or regarding my clients in any way that you posted to or published on any internet platform, including but not limited to Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, end quote. Finally, the notice informed the defendants that their failure to preserve such documents and evidence, quote, may result in evidentiary and other sanctions being imposed against them. Attached as Exhibit A is a true and correct copy of the October 30th, 2020 email to defendant Paulson. And then it states on line three at 7.23 a.m. on Saturday, October 31st, 2020, I received an email from defendant Paulson's Minnesota attorney referencing this lawsuit and requesting that all further communication be directed to him. Attached as Exhibit B is a true and correct copy of the email received on October 31st, 2020. These screenshots right here are the original email that Tati's lawyer had sent to Katie. And in the second paragraph at the top, it says, by the way of this correspondence you are hereby on notice and it is hereby demanded that you preserve all documents and evidence relating in any way to content you have published on any platform related to our clients and then it just basically goes on to list all the different social media platforms that sort of thing and anything that's related to James or Tati Westbrook you do not delete them. And then also in this notice, there was an email that was from Katie's attorney, and it goes as follows. This firm represents Katie Paulson and her business affairs. Please direct any further communications regarding the above captioned matter to my attention. So basically, this is the email that's confirming, yeah, we got all the documents. We are aware of the situation. And then on line four, it states, defendants after receiving the evidence, preservation notice, and complaint began deleting their videos and other online content relating to my clients, including specific content referenced in the complaint from various online platforms such as YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Attached as Exhibit C are examples and evidence of defendants' deletions that I personally acquired between October 30th and the date of the execution of this declaration. And the other documents that are in this basically shows all the deleted videos that Katie had removed about Tati Westbrook. And it also shows like tweets, what they look like before versus what they look like after with the comments. It shows screenshots of her Twitter, how many tweets she had before she deactivated the account. And then it also shows a screenshot of a thread where a bunch of tweets had been deleted. So she clearly did a lot of cleanup after she was very aware of what was going on. 
And then it goes on to say, in fact, my office was in the process of documenting tweets on Defendant Without a Crystal Ball's Twitter page and witnessed the disappearance of tweets related to my clients. In addition to actually witnessing some of these deletions, we also observed tweets by others calling attention to Defendant's sudden deletions of content on their various social media platforms. Then at some point over the Halloween weekend, Defendant Without a Crystal Ball's entire Twitter account was deactivated. By November 2nd, 2020, the Twitter account had been reactivated. However, at least 37 tweets had been deleted. By November 2nd, 2020, Defendant Paulson had deleted every tweet prior to September 13th, 2019 on her personal Twitter account at Katie Joy YouTube, which has been active since 2015. Once tweets are deleted, they are permanently lost along with any analytic data or other information that could be gleaned from such online postings, including a number of people who saw the tweets, how many people spread it through retweets, and the identity of the people who publish potentially defamatory information. Likewise, defendants also deleted Facebook posts and comments and YouTube videos after receiving the evidence preservation notice and complaint. Like Twitter, once Facebook posts or comments are deleted, they cannot be recovered, and any analytic data or other information that could be gleaned from such comments and posting is forever lost. The deletion of YouTube videos permanently removes all chats, comments, and other information related to the videos, including the number of views and defendants' own comments containing additional defamatory statements. Such information cannot be recovered, even if the video itself is recovered. I have personal experience with the way YouTube channels work. My personal experience derives from the fact that I currently represent multiple YouTube channels, including a YouTube channel that in 2019 was the largest and most successful YouTube content provider in the world, and my representation involves issues with regard to the management of the analytics related to my client's pages. So I'm going to stop right there. If you want to pause to read the rest of this, you can, but it basically goes into like saying how YouTube analytics work, Twitter analytics work, how when you delete things, they can be forever lost that sort of thing. So if you want to read the rest of it, you're more than welcome to. Basically, what this means is that when the actual lawsuit was filed, Tati's attorney emailed Katie a copy of the lawsuit, along with a preservation of notice to not delete any evidence. So when Katie was like putting on her Twitter that my attorney advised me that I have nothing to hide and this and that, we're going to keep up all the videos and tweets because she did nothing wrong. She was basically stating that because she had no other choice. She had to keep all this stuff up and she ended up not listening to that and deleting a bunch of stuff that related to the lawsuit. And that is a big no-no. So in that tweet, in my personal opinion, when she put it out on Twitter saying that her attorney told her to keep everything up, I think it was a bunch of BS. And her attorney probably advised her, you want to keep all this stuff up or you're going to get in serious trouble with the court because you can't delete the evidence once this has been filed and once you do have wind of the lawsuit. And her attorney ended up responding back to Tati's attorney saying, hey, I got this. Please direct everything to me from here on out. Do not email Katie directly. So that confirmed that they got all of the documents. And once she began deleting evidence and everything else, she knew of this lawsuit. So she can't backtrack and say, I knew nothing about this whole thing and this and that. And I was just, you know, removing stuff off my Twitter and my channel because her attorney confirmed that they got the documents. Katie also confirmed on Twitter that she knew of the lawsuit. So there's no way to hide this and her intentions of deleting all this evidence. And then on this page is the order from the actual court. And it says... This matter comes before the court upon plaintiff's motion for order to preserve evidence. In ruling on this motion, the court considered the pleadings, declarations, exhibits, and briefing filed by the parties in this matter. Based on the foregoing, it is hereby ordered that plaintiff's motion for an order to preserve evidence is granted.
And then basically it shows that she is ordered to preserve all evidence on all social media platforms. You guys can read all through that if you feel like it. But at the bottom here, it also states that if she doesn't comply with this court order, then she will be in civil contempt of court, which isn't a good thing to be in. And up to this point, she has not done it. And after this point, she still hasn't done it because she has deactivated her Twitter and has deleted more tweets since this order came out. And in my personal opinion, if you're getting sued for something like this, if you have nothing to hide, then it's not a big deal to keep it online. And just given everything that I've gone through with this lawsuit, when I've been comparing videos and tweets and everything else, it shows to me that she passed off her opinions as facts multiple times, and she has stated claims that she hasn't had proof to back it up and that have been so outrageous. It's crazy. I will be interested to see how Katie responds and how they, you know, respond back to all the videos and tweets and the mountain of evidence that Tati's side has. I will be very interested to see how they respond back to this. And we will get into that once she does respond. I did hear on a live stream that she put up a couple days ago, it's probably removed at this point, but her attorney was drafting up everything and she should have a response by next week that she will exclusively go over on her channel, of course. So I will be very interested to see how they respond to a lot of these claims because it's like, it's a no brainer to me. Defamation has occurred multiple times on the reporting she has done for Tati Westbrook. But that's just my personal opinion. You know, you can draw your own conclusions about it, but we will hear her side eventually. So now that we're through all of that, that is basically what had happened when Katie deactivated her Twitter and what she had been doing up to the point of knowing about this lawsuit. So Let's now move on to all the drama that's been going on. And she has been, oh my God, she's just been so all over the place with things. And there is a lot to get into regarding that. So after all of that happened, you would think Katie would be quiet at this point because I know I would, but no, she... <laughs> She is doing the opposite of being quiet. So after Tati's attorney filed that, she went on her channel and she did a live stream. And this live stream was called, Deleting this later, can't wait to destroy more evidence, laughing emoji. And she also put out on her Twitter on November 6th, the video was uploaded also on November 6th, and it says, LOL. I delete so much evidence because I'm that stupid. The one thing I don't get with her is there is like concrete proof that shows she is deleting videos and she is deleting tweets, but yet in her own mind, she's not actually deleting evidence or maybe in her own mind, she knows she is, but she's just making fun of the situation. I just don't understand like her logic behind the stuff that she does at all. Like it, it legitimately never makes any sense. And then the next day on November 7th, she uploads a video that ca that's called Saturday Afternoon Important Update. And in this video, she was in the chat. And I think somebody asked her why she keeps talking about the situation or why she keeps deleting videos. I don't know who said what, um, but the video is not on her channel anymore. Shocker. But in the comments, she had said this. Court documents can say a lot of things. Why don't you wait for my response? And then she also said, also, I still haven't been served. And then someone went over to Tati's attorney's Twitter page and said, Katie just said that she has not been served. And then Tati's attorney replied with, without a crystal ball's agent for service, a process was already served. KJ's attorney has also agreed to accept service for her. So I am not sure what she is referring to regarding service. And then he also stated that's not how it works. An evidence preservation letter was sent within an hour of the suit being 
being filed. Once a person is on notice of the lawsuit, just notice the duty to preserve evidence attaches. So what he's saying, it doesn't matter that she hasn't been physically served with the lawsuit. And what Katie is saying, I haven't been served, so I can delete whatever I want, basically. And I would think that Tati's attorney, a highly reputable attorney, knows what he is talking about. So after all this happened, this is where she really really gets out of control so we're going to move on to the next part of this video so on november 7th tati's attorney put on his twitter a picture with someone in his office and they are watching no other than emily baker and Emily Baker is a YouTuber. If you don't know who she is, she is an attorney and she specializes in like lawsuits and stuff like that. So on her channel, she has went through Tati's lawsuit that her business partner filed against her. And she's also gone through Tati's lawsuit that she filed against Katie. She's also gone through the motion to preserve evidence those sort of things. And she actually reached out to Tati's attorney to ask them some questions. And Tati's attorney exclusively gave her Tati's response to Clark Swanson's lawsuit to read on her channel. And after that happened is when everything just started getting out of control. But when he posted this picture on his Twitter, I think it enraged Katie because Katie started literally going off. I mean, shit was hitting the fan. It was absolutely insane. She went on a Twitter rant. She got on a live stream talking about it as well. And we're going to go through every single piece of that. I do want to say that I think Emily Baker is an awesome, awesome YouTuber. She explains things very well on her channel. I mean, when it comes to myself, I am so stupid when it comes to lawsuits, legal terms, that sort of thing. And she explains it in a way for everybody to understand. And I highly recommend her channel. And she will be linked in the description box down below. If you want to learn more about the lawsuits and the legal side of everything. Okay, you guys. So Emily Baker dropped the video on the exclusive response to the Clark Swanson lawsuit. And in this video, she specifically stated that it was not a official filing with the court and that she reached out to Tati's legal team and they gave her this response to read exclusively on her channel. Emily specifically stated that. I'm gonna roll the clip right now, roll it. Today we've got the other side, exclusively. So we're going to get to see what Tati's camp thinks of the Clark Swanson complaint, because I have their answer to his demand. It was a document made in preparation for litigation. And when I reached out to ask Tati's lawyers some questions about the defamation suit, I asked him for comment on this and he was like, I can't really speak to it. And provided this document for me to break down for you. These are responses to allegations. No one has gone to court on this yet. I don't expect that to happen for a really long time. It's up for you to decide what you think. It's up for me to just present it like it is. And that is exactly what she did. She presented the document like it was. She was up front what the document was. And Katie, only having selective hearing, takes that and makes her own narrative with it. So we're going to start from the beginning of Katie's reactions to all of this and we're going to get into the tweets she put out first and then we're going to get into the live stream she did secondly so let's get into the tweets so her full rant started around 5 p.m on November 8th and she began by saying just because you are a former prosecutor it doesn't give you the right to defame a party to a lawsuit without evidence as an attorney you should know that all parties have a right to share their side and it's irresponsible to pick a side before you have all the facts and she said also using your platform to harm me and my business is a violation of youtube guidelines and civil law says you can't defame competitors so truly do better you've never spoken to me know nothing about my side and are spreading defamatory statements about me on your platform and this is a bunch of bullshit because this does not apply to YouTube. You are not competitors with everybody on YouTube. Nobody is buying anything. Everybody watches the same channels. 
it's ridiculous what she's saying. And she sounds very ignorant when she states this kind of stuff. And then she goes on to say, Emily Baker is not being truthful. She's never one time asked for my side and is hanging out with people that have doxxed, harassed me, and stalked me. Funny how there are two sides to every story. These accounts are trolling me, not the other way around. And then she goes on to say, I refuse to be bullied for doing my job. I'm asking my subscribers to not engage with these trolls, to not engage with these videos, and to allow me the space to do my job. And then she goes and tags Team YouTube, and she says, at Team YouTube, please, I'm begging you to stop this targeted harassment. And then she goes on to say, my attorney has her videos at Emily D. Baker. We'll be hearing from my attorney and will be demanded to cease and desist her defamation of me and cease her behavior of attempting to ruin my business. And then she goes on to say, Emily knows nothing about my side. I have a great attorney giving me great advice. Take care. Yeah, your attorney's advice is a bunch of BS at this point, because if he was a good attorney, he'd be telling you to shut the f up. And then she tags Team YouTube again, and she says, at Team YouTube is using, Emily D. Baker is using her platform to defame me along with the help of an attorney. I would like your help. Thanks. And then Emily actually responds and says, at this point, you should have a clear grasp of what is and isn't defamation. There is nothing defamatory on my channel. There is commentary. And then she goes on to say, Katie does, dear Emily, if you continue, you will hear from my lawyer. I find your content harassing and you are harming my channel. See how that works? I never defamed anyone and you don't have the professionalism to even ask me for a response by as much. And then she says, she's never one time reached out to me, then hangs out with troll accounts that have doxxed and harassed, called the police on me, called the hospital when my son was there, published my blank investigation to humiliate me. Emily, cease and desist of your harm to my business. And then Emily responds with, haven't reached out to any parties in this case because I'm a commentary channel. I haven't been hanging around with anyone. W-O-A-C-B, I am not harming your business or talking about you outside case commentary and answering questions based on your attacks. And then Katie responds with, Emily, why did you allegedly mislead people yesterday and act like what you read to them was a filing from the court? There was no court filing and there has been no response. Why are you hanging out with accounts that have targeted, doxxed, and stalked me? Make that make sense. And then while all of this is going on, she starts putting out quotes on her Twitter. And the first one said, sad how some people believe their own lies and the stories they make up in their heads. And then the other one she put out, an adult bully tries to avoid responsibility for their own bad behavior by blaming the target for causing it. And I'm just going to say right now, every time she starts doing this stuff, it's like a reflection on herself. It describes her to a T. And it's always somebody else's fault but her own. She always avoids responsibility. She always points the finger at other people. But she describes herself so on point with some of the stuff that she puts out. So then she starts putting tweets out towards Tati's attorney and referencing Emily's video. And this is what she said. Why is a quote response being published as though it's official? There is no filed response in court. Why would an attorney grant access to a YouTube channel attorney to release a quote response that isn't from the court? Hope the party spoken about doesn't sue the channel for defamation. I'm sorry, but not everybody's answer is lawsuits. And I just get so tired of her threatening lawsuits, speaking for other people and everything else. And then she goes on to say, seems like someone is trying to run a narrative to sway public opinion, but not considering that by doing this, they kind of defame a person with no evidence and seek to embarrass the person and reduce credibility. Again, my opinion, not how I do things, but that's just me. And I'm just going to say from the experience that I have researched her and everything else, she would have jumped all over that in a hot second. And then she goes on to say, which ends me here at, quote, publicity stunt, in my opinion. And then she also says, also, the evidence release kind of proves that I'm not the reason for someone's company getting hurt. The partners are each blaming the other for the damage to the company, and my name isn't ever mentioned, my opinion. 
Um, why would your name be mentioned in a lawsuit that has nothing to do with you? The focus is on Clark Swanson in that lawsuit. But hey, I could just be stupid and not understanding what's going on. But anyway, she goes on to say, according to the documents I read, it seems like they were kind of arguing about the business direction. They are both accusing the other of the company being damaged before I knew they existed. My opinion, I will wait for everyone else to catch up and maybe apologize. She is something else. Oh my gosh. And then she took a little break and about an hour later, she came out with more tweets and she said, also, attorneys that file lawsuits in Washington must abide by the federal code of conduct and the Washington state professional conduct rules. Seeking to embarrass, delay, or burden a third person is a violation. See rules here. And then she goes on to say grievances can be filed against the attorney and witnesses who participated will be interviewed by federal officials. This is serious. And then she says violations of these rules can lead to disbarment, suspension, sanctions, attorney discipline imposed by any federal or state court, bar association, or governing authority. And she is referring to Tati's attorney right now. I have no idea what she's talking about. I, in my opinion, I don't even know how this is even possible, but she's accusing Tati's attorney of these things and that he can get disbarred for it. But I don't, I don't know. I don't know anything about the legal system. This, to me, is probably a bunch of BS, but I don't know that for sure. You guys can draw your own conclusions about it. And then she ends with, these tweets will not be deleted. These are public records and the rules of the court. Thanks. Okay, you guys, so I had to do the crickets because what the fuck? Seriously, why would you do this? Like, in your mind, why would you think that any of this is okay at all? Like, I just don't understand what is going on in her brain to behave this way. And she wasn't done here, but I do want to say a few things. One, in this situation, Emily is not the attorney. In this situation, Emily is just a YouTube channel and she is using her professional opinion on the matter. So Emily doesn't have to reach out to you, Katie. Emily doesn't have to do anything. And you are acting like she is involved with this lawsuit, like legally, and she's not. She's just another YouTuber, like we all are, stating our opinions and giving our commentary on the entire situation. The only difference between her and other commentary channels is she is a attorney in real life. So she knows what she is talking about when she explains lawsuits, but she doesn't owe you anything. Katie, did you give Tati the chance to explain herself when you got the exclusive from the Clark Swanson lawsuit? Did you give her the time of day before you ran with the narrative that that lawsuit was 100% true on Clark Swanson's side? No, you didn't. You went off tweeting like crazy, making video after video after video on it, and just ran with the fact that Clark Swanson was 100% right in that legal document. And that is what you did. So Katie, all Emily has done is read lawsuits and give her commentary and professional opinion on the entire situation. Nothing she has done is defamatory whatsoever. You really need to look up the definition of defamatory because you obviously don't know what is and what isn't. Anyways, so you would think Katie would be done after she, you know, put out a million tweets like going crazy on Twitter, but no, she went on Instagram, she did a live stream, and she had more to say about Emily and Tati's attorney and this entire situation. Before I play the clip, I have to apologize for the audio. It's really bad, but it's the only like clip I could find of this live stream. So I apologize for the audio, but here is the clip of that. Roll it. I actually do think Emily is defaming me. And I think Emily is being pretty hypocritical. Um, I think Emily needs to, she's never, first of all, she is speaking to a side of a case where she literally should not be speaking to a side of the case. She's never asked me for my point of view. She's never reached out to me. She has put out information about me from a uh, frivolous, 
and fictitious lawsuit that's being used to uh, intimidate me, I believe, my opinion. There's no base. There's no basis or merit to any of the claims in there. And so by going up on there and acting as though and speaking as though what I've done in this lawsuit, according to these people, is fact is defamation because the lawsuit is defamation. So if she wants to continue to defame me, I will continue to report her to Team YouTube. But she has not tried to reach out to me. She's also working with an attorney who has violated at least two rules within the Washington um, Code of Conduct. And as a attorney that's representing their client, they are required by law in a federal court to not only abide by the federal rules of conduct, but also the Washington rules of conduct. And that attorney has violated at least two, if not three violations, which could like end up with sanctions or disbarment. Why is an attorney going to a YouTube channel who is in a lawsuit. Why would an attorney use a YouTube channel? Think about that, you guys. Be smarter than this. If he is so pressed and worried about the cases that he's building, why does he care about public perception? What he should be doing, I'm not deleting anything. What he should be doing is worrying about the cases. My attorney does not have a channel. He has a YouTube account. (sighs) Emily is defaming me. And if Emily wants to continue to work with the lawyers on the opposing side and only present one side of evidence and then assume that everything that about me is true and factual, she is defaming me. And Emily is uh, it's against the it's a violation of YouTube to go up on your channel and to defame and discredit and try to pummel somebody else. And because of her videos, I am losing subscribers. So if she wants to continue doing this, I make more money on her on YouTube than she does. So, you know, like. Her and the attorney in this case should not be going to a YouTube attorney and dropping information that's not part of their case. Do you know the entire video that she put up yesterday? None of that was filed in court. Absolutely none of it. That response that she posted in her video last night, I am their content. That response that Emily put up on her channel, that's not filed in court. You can go and look up the court case. Go look in the court case in LA Superior Court. What she said and what she shared were not court documents. I can put a cease and desist on her, and I'm asking her to cease and desist. If she wants to continue to do this, she will end up in the countersuit. And if she's getting information from the opposing counsel, and then they are defaming me by using her channel, they will end up in the countersuit. Like, that. do you understand how, how unprofessional this attorney is acting? Do you have any idea? He has violated at least three codes of conduct. He could be disbarred. He could be sanctioned. He could actually be charged with a crime for what he's doing. So, you know, allegedly. We've sent him the letter of what he's doing. No, she's not doing what she should be doing because she's speaking to one side and not speaking to the other. And when you go up on a channel and you defame someone, you have to give them the right to defend themselves. And if you don't, and then you continue to make content and they tell you to stop and you continue to do it, then you're at a point, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. And all of the, to all of the YouTubers that are bashing me right now, cease and desist. That's it. Like you all are like dragging me for defamation while defaming me. Make that make sense. Make that make sense. Um, Humiliating me, um, targeting my business. Um, breaking all kinds of civil, like, you know, you're, I'm a competitor to you, so you better stop or, you know, that's how these rules work. So they're saying that they, this would never happen to them yet. They're doing what they're saying I did. Right. I'm going to continue to speak my truth and I'm not going to be defamed. I'm not going to be bullied. I'm not going to be the next James Charles. I don't understand why you guys don't understand what's happening here. This happened to James Charles. And then it was what, Jeffrey and Shane? Now it's my turn? Like, how did I have anything to do with any of this? I didn't, I'm a scapegoat. I'm not scared, nope. Because the truth is on my side. And I have no reason to defame anyone. Like, I've never defamed anyone. I have no hate in my heart for any of these people. All I wanted to do was tell a story, share the sides, look at everything. I looked at all sides of it. Okay, we are done with that now. Um, As you can see, I think she's full of BS. I don't agree with anything she says. 
and you guys can form your own opinions about it, but there are so many discrepancies in the stuff she says, and the things she says about other people is just absolutely ridiculous, in my opinion. So now we are going to listen to what Emily said in response to Katie, because she said something on her channel, and we are going to listen to that right now. So roll it. Yesterday, yesterday I tried to stay neutral. We are fans of facts, not and then you call me unethical. So then I watched the apology, but implying that I'm unethical is it's not going to do anything other than annoy me. Because once again, I've, I was a prosecutor for over 10 years. I've been an attorney for over 15 years. So first of all, I, I'm a great attorney. I was great at what I did. I was a great prosecutor. I was an ethical prosecutor. So I let the Twitter temper tantrum go. I said, I have not defamed you. I have not talked about you. I've talked about this case. But if you are going to get on video and come for me, then we're going to take it out of the realm of just going through legal documents and I am going to respond. Don't ring the bell if you don't want it to be rung because you can't unring that bell. In the apology video, um, she said that my commentary is impacting people's beliefs and that I'm biased. In Twitter, she said I was biased, but that I'm biased and not having dialogue with one side, only having dialogue with one side. First of all, with regard to her case, the only side that has shown up in court is Tati's side. So guess what? We talked about those court documents. When another lawyer files another court document, then we'll talk about those court documents. That's how that works. The only exception to that is when I asked about jurisdiction, because it's been a long time since law school, diversity jurisdiction is something we will never, ever forget, is when I asked if there was a comment regarding the other case that has nothing to do with her. The, the business partner case, nothing to do with her. She implied that I misled people. No, if you don't watch my videos, don't talk. There's no misleading. There's just talking about what the things are. I have said every single time that the damages are going to be hard to prove in the Tati case. You know why? Because they're going to be hard to prove. There's a lot that goes into proving it. I've also said that the statements in the allegation that they're saying you said are allegations. So from November 8th, the tweet says, Emily Baker is not being truthful. She never one time asked for my side. Sure didn't. And is hanging out with people who have doxxed, harassed, and stalked me. I hang out with my eight-year-old, my 12-year-old, my husband, but cool. Funny how there are two sides to every story. I've always said that. These accounts are trolling me, not the other way around. W whatever with the trolling. Um, I am being truthful. You know why? Because I read documents that's, and then I give opinion. I'm not stating anything as fact, so truth isn't really a part of it because it's opinion, not fact. When I state facts, I state the fact that the lawsuit says what the it says because we all read it together because they're public documents. Yeah, um, without a crystal ball tweet at this. She also said that she refused to be bullied for doing her job. She also threatened to sue me. She also said, quote, just because you're a former prosecutor, I am a former prosecutor. I'm proud to be a former prosecutor. Just because you're a former prosecutor, it doesn't give you the right to defame a party to a lawsuit without evidence. As an attorney, you should know that all parties have a right to share their side and it's irresponsible to pick a side before you have all the facts. I'm sorry, but the mother hypocrisy of the thing I don't pick a side. I don't have a side. I'm not on a side. You know what side I am on? I'm on the sassy lawyer side. So if you file filing documents that are entertaining, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about the entertaining legal documents. Your side hasn't showed up in court yet. Hasn't showed up in court yet. We've all made that clear. But don't say that I am defaming anybody because there has been no defamation up in here. That's not going on on my channel. Everything I've said comes from the lawsuit or is my opinion, or is me questioning things. Guess what, we're allowed to question things and say, hey, this seems weird. These two things seem connected. I never accused you of being a troll. I asked because it alleges in the documents that you were trolling. I said, you guys, has she ever called herself a troll? It says self-proclaimed troll. Did, did she ever say that? I can't imagine that she did. That's what I said. It continues, it continues. Using your platform to harm me and my business is a violation of YouTube guidelines. Oh, I'm sorry. Who's using their platform to do what? Because I've seen some shit you've said in your videos. We'll go on. It's a violation of YouTube guidelines and, a, and civil law 
Oh, thank you for explaining civil law to me. Civil law says you can't defame competitors. Thank you for explaining tortious interference in business relationships, but it's cool. So truly, do better. Okay, I will. I'll address it directly. You've never spoken to me. Sure haven't. You know nothing of my side. Sure don't. And are spreading defamatory statements about me on your platform. Sure I'm not. Sure I'm not. Because the, the hypocrisy of the thing. I do not come and address stuff outside of legal cases, but when you bring it to me and ring that bell, you do not, I've said it a million times, don't rile the lawyers. She also went on to say, attorneys that file lawsuits in Washington must abide by the federal code of conduct. Well, thank you for trying to explain what the codes of conduct are to the lawyers in the room. She also said, why is a response being published as though it's official? Yeah, sure didn't say it was official. There is no filed response in court. Yep, said that. Why would an attorney grant access to a YouTube channel attorney to release a response that isn't from court? Because I asked for it and he said yes. Hope the party spoken about doesn't sue the channel for defamation. Girl, you don't know what you're talking about. So the party spoken about is in the middle of litigation and everything I've said is directly aligned with documents. See what happens when you get into problems and I would pull up the defamation suit and say, hey, Here's the problem. The problem is when you go to the documents and then make assumption based on those documents to say that's not true. Like, hey, in the first case, the business partner case, it says that the business partner used his banking relationships. And then a channel extrapolated that to mean, allegedly, that there was no bank accounts broke and all of these other accusations. So in the defamation suit, it points back to that. When we talk about the documents, it's fine. You can talk about the documents and lawyers can be on social media. Funny how that works. Twitter's available to everybody, as it turns out. And then she said <laughs> that I called her attorney names and that was her criticism of me. She alleges that I called her attorney inept. Now I know you guys have watched all the videos on my channel and I know you know that I didn't say that. If I was going to call an attorney anything ever, and I don't, I've always said, What's going on with her and her attorney are between them. What her attorney is telling her is between them. And I've said, if, her if she's acting this way, she might not be listening to the advice of her attorney. That is always what I've maintained. If I was gonna call another attorney anything at all, and I'm not saying that this is the case in this case, the word inept is not the word I would use. If I'm going in on an attorney, I'm gonna call you incompetent. I'm never gonna call anybody inept, ever. So do not say, do not say what you think I said. This is, if we have not learned anything, if we have learned anything, do not try to put words in other people's mouths online because I will go nuts on you like Shannon Bedore up on The Real Housewives saying, I never said that because you know what? I have integrity and I never said that. All right, you guys. Well, Emily said a lot of stuff. She said a lot more on the stream she did and I will link it down below if you want to watch the full thing because the, she said a lot in that stream and it's like an hour long but those were pretty much the highlights of what she said and I couldn't agree more with everything that she said and I love her like she is just so real and down to earth I just love her um but we're gonna move on so that's basically everything that happened between Emily and Katie now there wasn't an apology video and we're gonna get into that shortly but I do want to hit on a couple other things before we get into that apology video Okay, so on November 8th, Katie did a live stream with UniRock on his second channel, Rock A Lot. And in this live stream, they talked about all kinds of stuff. They talked about like other creators and Katie's response to what they were saying about her, like Keemstar, Tati, um, Creep Show, and Emily. She was still talking about Emily in this live stream, yes. Um, and Creep Show had shown up in the chat and had said some stuff in response to Katie. Now, Katie had said something, this is what Creep Show says, I can't find like the original comment and she probably retracted it or I'm missing it in the live stream somewhere, but Creep Show had commented based on something that Katie had said. And I don't know what it was, but something about being a goober, it sounds like. But once Creep Show said something in the chat to her, Katie went off. Okay, so I know you guys don't have the full context of the video yet, but I'm going to read you guys the 
remarks that Creep Show made in the chat that set Katie off, and then we're going to watch the clip. So the first comment that enraged Katie was, see you in my next video, ya goober. And then she also said, she literally in the chat calling me a goober. I'm fucking fine. And then she also said, nah, I have an hour long video dropping tomorrow on this. And then the last one says, I just quoted you. So as you guys can see, it's nothing like too crazy or anything like that. It's being blown out of proportion. So now we're going to watch the clip of Katie's reaction. Roll it. If Creep Show is in the audience, I just want to tell her to stop talking about me. Um, I Creep? did not. I saw her comment in there. And if she's if that's really her that's in the show, like I need her. She needs to stop defaming me. Um, she needs to stop saying I stalked her. I never stalked her. Sending her two emails is not stalking her. And if she continues to do this and like be a part of this, like just stop it, creep show. I've never made a video about you. Stop talking about me. Well, I can help you with that one. Uh, one and, and I, creep show. Uni Rock asked me to reach out to you. He said that you could help me. I did. Yeah. Now here's the other thing though. Creep show. It might not be her. We we can't. We used to be able to check to see who is in our audience. You could click three dots and go to their channel. We can't do that now. So a sock account could come in now. If it is creep show, I want to say this if she's in here because I want to help you with this. Um, there, what I have screenshots to back this up because I, I did a video, uh, documenting the targeted harassment campaign against you some months ago. And there was an account that took two letters in your name and flip flopped them and then spammed creep show art over a long period of time. And this is the thing. This is why I say before. And she's Emily, literally in the chat calling me a goober. Oh, well, Hey, don't, well, you're a goober too. Creep show. I'm just playing. I just thought it'd be funny if I called creep show a goober. Hi creep show. Hello. Come talk. We don't bite. We're, we're, we're normal people. You can come hang if you want. Okay, there's a few things I want to say before we continue with this video. The first thing I want to say is pay attention to how often Katie interrupts Unirock and also pay attention to how uncomfortable Unirock keeps getting because of Katie. And also they keep saying that they don't know if it's creep show or not. And I just want to say straight up, if you have a verified YouTube account, you're going to know it's them or not because there's a check mark by their name. And that's how you can tell whether or not. But they keep referring to the fact that they think it might be a troll account and not actually creep show. But I just wanted to make that clear as well. Viewers were trying to send evidence to Emily Baker of a of of this campaign against you that's been going on since last June. Now I know I can't talk about certain people that were involved in it, but um, I feel that anyone hold on hold on hold on please please creep, creep show either act like an adult or get out of this chat right now. You are being a bully. You are nothing but a bully. I have never stalked you. Leave me alone. I will get my lawyer to get you in this lawsuit. Leave me alone, creep show. I'm done. Okay, listen, how do we build bridges, Katie? How do we build bridges? Because we all exist on this platform. How do we do that? You know, is there a way or is it just too far gone, do you think? She is literally... She, we she don't know that that's her, though. We don't know that that's her. There's no way to tell right. Unless Creepshow wants to tweet that it is her, that's the only way we would know. The YouTube took the, our ability to find out if it is her. I just want to make sure we're careful. So close my live chat. That way you don't have to look at it. That way it don't matter. You know what I mean? <laughs> So creep show, creep show, why is it okay for you to get up on your platform and defame me and say nasty things about me? But if I do it to someone you like, it's defamation. Why is it okay for you to go up on your channel and do all kinds of nasty and to tell your community I'm stalking you, which is a damn lie. You are lying. You're accusing me of a crime when you call me a stalker. Why is that okay, creep show? You know how quickly you can get served with defamation? That's how it works. I think it's pretty crazy that all of this is coming to a head right now. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi. It's pretty crazy. We got a bunch of different creators hanging out. Somebody just said Creepshow did. Hey. Oh, God. Katie just zapped Creepshow. <laughs> I'll unblock you after the stream, Creepshow. I'm sorry. Uh, Katie, I'm not taking sides. I just want to, I want, I try to solve problems. That I'm a mediator. I try to solve problems. I'm not trying to start problems. So even if I didn't know that Unirock was not supporting Katie anymore, watching this video would have made me feel bad for him, regardless if he was still defending Katie or not, because Katie is putting him in a very awkward position because she is on his channel, not her channel, and she is being very disrespectful because he's sitting there trying to defend her, trying to help her, and she's acting like this. Secondly, Katie had a wrench to Uni Rock's channel, so she was a moderator, so she had the power to block Creepshow, which is what she did 
which again is very, very awkward for Unirock. The way Katie is behaving is completely unacceptable. Unacceptable behavior, period. Really just tweeted about it. Well, okay. I'm oh, saying that was her. So I'm going to say this right now. Creep show, I didn't stalk you. I sent you two emails because Unirock suggested I reach out to you, not because I even knew who you were. I had no idea who you were. He suggested I contact you. Um, you did not respond. I participated in some tweets between a few other creators and you, but that's it. Like I didn't, I wasn't subtweeting you or contacting you constantly. I, I have no interest. Because that was Creep Show. Okay. So I'm going to stop right there. And I just wanted to show you guys how out of hand things got, how just out of line Katie got and how uncomfortable she was making uni rock because you could see how uncomfortable he was. It was literally written all over his face. I can't imagine having a big creator in your live chat and being a smaller creator you know, being shocked over the fact that they're even watching your channel and are commenting in your live chat. And then you have a guest that's on your channel behaving the way that Katie was. I can't even begin to imagine how embarrassing Uni Rock must have felt. I would have been so, so embarrassed over Katie's behavior. Okay, so the next day, Creep Show Art followed through with what she told Katie, and she put out a video that was titled, Without a Crystal Ball is the Worst. And this video came out right before her apology video dropped. So you can only imagine how mad it made Katie. Katie then went on to her channel and uploaded an apology. But I want you guys to pay attention to how she doesn't take any accountability in this video. When Katie does apologies, and I showed it at the beginning of this video, when she does apologies, and this goes for past apologies and current apologies, she always has to put in there, I'm sorry you feel or I'm sorry I did this because this person did this to me and blah, blah, blah. She never takes like accountability. She never just says, hey, I was wrong. I'm sorry and leaves it at that. There's always a but to it every single time. And also I couldn't find the full video of the apology, but basically the video starts out by calling a few people out, like three or four or maybe five people, and she pretty much puts a lot of blame for her behavior on these individuals. And I'm just going to like flat out say I have talked to a lot of the accounts that she mentioned at the beginning of her apology video, and they are not anywhere near what she is making them out to be at all. Most of them I have talked to a few times and the interactions I've had with them from what I've seen is they document her behavior with her own videos or Twitter posts, stuff like that, and they document it all on Facebook or Twitter or on YouTube channels. Like they're just so tired of her hurting other people and they're documenting everything. It just may not be in the form of videos. It may be in a Facebook group, it may be on a Twitter, but I just don't think they're what she's making them out to be in my personal opinion. Okay, so anyways, let's get to the video, but that's how the video starts. Let's roll the part where she starts talking about the individual people she's apologizing to. So roll it. Because of the immense harassment and trolling, it has been hard for me to see the real criticism from the harassment. I have for sure made mistakes by blocking subscribers and accusing them of trolling. Misunderstood the intentions of commentary channels and their criticism of me while under duress because of the relentless target targeting of this group. I have absolutely gotten frustrated at creators when I've seen them become weaponized against me by this group, including Emily Baker, Creepshow Art, Nick Snyder, Dustin Daly, Angelica Oles, Keemstar, Tipster, Augie, to name a few. To these creators, I'm sorry if I said things while under attack that may have been upsetting to you. I'm sorry that I hurt your feelings. I, I truly apologize for what I have said or done in response to your criticisms because of these trolls. So do you guys see what I mean? Everything she says in this apology so far is, I'm sorry if you feel 
I did this, or I'm sorry, I said these things to you while under attack because of these trolls. It always has a but to it. And one other thing I want to point out before we continue is she monetized this apology video. Every single YouTuber that makes an apology never monetizes it. And if they do, they get heavily criticized. The hypocrisy in this is like so high because I remember her coming down so hard on Micah and James Stoffer because they monetized their video that they uploaded to tell their audience that they rehomed their adopted son. She is just so hypocritical when she does things herself. I have no plans to sue any of you and I hope you can, we can all move forward in a positive direction. Now, there's a few creators I want to just call out um, or apologize to personally, and I'm gonna start with Angelica Oles. I'm sorry that you are upset about the copyright strike that went down back in May of 2019. I apologize that I walked away instead of working with you on it. I was new to YouTube, I didn't know you, and I was afraid that you were lying to me. I should have worked it out with you, you are correct. I have learned from this mistake, and I can assure you that this is not something I have continued. Nick Snyder, viewer's voice. I'm sorry that a day in May of 2019, I called you Your sobriety is delicate and you have bravely shared your struggles with your audience. I never should have made that comment. I apologized to you on that same day and you said that you accepted my apology. I have not repeated that comment since and I truly wish you the best on your health and well-being. Creep show art. This one's gonna be a little bit longer. I'm sorry if you believe that I stalked you. I, sent, I did send you two emails, but I did not incess incessantly tweet at you. There were at least two accounts at that time that were impersonating me on Twitter, having the same photo and their handles looking almost identical to mine. I have tried to unsuccessful unsuccessfully communicate with you on this issue. Thus far, you have not responded. There are other creators that can vouch for me about these fake accounts. I'm sorry for calling you out last night on live on Unirock's channel, and I'm sorry for blocking you. I didn't say I was going to sue you for calling me a goober, <laughs> just so you know. You are entitled to not like me. You are entitled to criticize me. However, I hope you reconsider using the trolls that stalk me as a source for your criticism. Also, it's pretty hard for me to listen to your criticism of me when you call me names. If you have real criticism, it would be easier for me to understand without the name calling. So far, all I hear is a bunch of excuses. Again, Angelica Oles, I'm sorry that you got upset. And it was because I was new to YouTube and I didn't understand what was going on. Just say you're sorry. Say you're sorry for going off on her on Twitter. Say you're sorry for overreacting without the butts in it. And then the whole Nick Snyder apology. You know, you had to bring up that you already apologized and he accepted your apology. Just say you're sorry and leave it at that. And then the whole creep show thing. Oh my gosh. Excuse after excuse. And you're saying all this information that comes from these quote troll accounts, according to you, is 100% false when you know I'm good and well. It's not 100% false. They are your own videos. They are your own tweets and everything else. They are things that you put out, Katie. Now, my final is to Emily Baker, who has been covering this legal case against me. And I feel like this one might be one of the more important ones because I feel like a lot of you are getting information from her about the case against me. And I need to like clarify some of the things that she said that have been, I believe, misleading. Emily, while I understand you're in, you have interest in this case, I just want to state that I have not responded to the allegations. At this point, there is literally no evidence that has been provided to suggest that I've done any trolling or any trolling or stalked anyone. Now, that's not entirely true. You guys seen the beginning of this video where she is on video saying that she has troll accounts that help her with certain creators or certain reality stars, whoever she named in that video. And I'm sure those aren't the only trolls that help her with certain creators. And you also seen the Facebook post where she openly admits being in the group under a sock account to spy on the group. And this group is a group that is for Michael Long and his daughter. And that is the child that she called a brat that is an essay victim. So 
That's not true, Katie, but let's continue. I'm sorry for calling you out last night, but I do have valid criticism for how you are reporting this case, which is, I believe you are seemingly coming off biased by having an open dialogue with one side while refusing to know anything from the other side. Under the law, I am innocent until proven guilty. Please realize that as your channel grows, your commentary is impacting people's belief of my guilt without evidence. Clips taken out of context on YouTube do not tell the whole story. I deny all of the allegations in the lawsuit. I found, and then particularly, I wanna call you out on one thing. I found your comment that I have an inept attorney to be very misleading. To date, you have not spoken to my, engaged with anyone on this side, nor, know anything that has happened behind the scenes between the lawyers. If you did, you would know that my attorney is doing everything in his power to not only defend me, but to work with the other attorneys. To date, my attorney has not used the public or social media to sway the public opinion of anyone, nor has he defamed the Westbrooks, and he prefers that this be handled offline, which is what ethical attorneys should do. I do hope you understand that Mr. Saltz, Tati's lawyer, has violated multiple rules under the Washington State Professional Conduct Rules. I believe he is using social media to try to, this case without evidence and to sway public opinion against me. We now, due to his behavior and involvement with trolls, have grounds to not only file grievances against him in the state of Washington and California, but also to file a countersuit against him for defamation, interfere with, interference with business, and harm to a competitor. Given all of this, to all of you creators, I am open to listening to your criticism. If you have valid criticism that is not based upon false and defamatory statements by this troll group, please bring it to me. First off, she didn't even apologize to Emily. Secondly, Emily, you heard what Emily's response was. She never called her attorney what Katie's accusing her of. You haven't responded to the lawsuit, Katie. Why would she hear your side until you respond in court and file it with the court, your response to the lawsuit? Because once that happens, everybody is going to report on it. So what you say towards Emily makes absolutely no sense. And she has done no such thing of misleading people or anything else. I have watched her videos. She has stuck to the lawsuits and gave her professional opinion and it hasn't swayed from that whatsoever until you called her out and she had to respond because you were throwing a temper tantrum on Twitter. And are you really that delusional that you see nothing wrong with clips and tweets that you have taken off online yourself for reasons that you know good and well, why you took them offline, that they're taking out of context. There is no clip that I've shown on my channel that has been taken out of context. And I've gotten some clips from the people you mentioned in this video. There is nothing false about the clips and tweets that everybody has been using. They are true because you put them online. They are your own words. Stop lying and making excuses. You're going to lose this lawsuit because you can't keep your mouth shut. Tati has a strong case against you and you're making it an even stronger case. I would stop worrying about countersuits and, you know, worrying about what other people are saying and just be quiet. Be quiet. Stop uploading and take a break. It's simple as that. This woman seriously drives me crazy just because how hypocritical she is, how she takes no accountability, how much of a narcissist she is. She just drives me crazy. And that's just my personal opinion on her. I'm just going to make sure I state that because, you know, she's like threatening to sue anyone and everyone that even gives her any type of criticism, even though it's merely their opinions on her. There is one other thing I want to show you guys before I end this video, and it is a clip from another channel. And this is how the apology from Katie Joy should have went. So roll the clip. All of these accounts record what I say and put it out to the public. And then people get mad at me when they see these videos. I'm sorry that my content is so good you feel the need to use my own words not taken out of context against me. I will not sue you. Okay, so I had to put this channel in my video because I found this channel the other day and she does a bunch of impressions 
of Katie, and they are so on point. And I was laughing so hard at her videos because even though she's joking around, you know, playing her as a character, everything she says is like spot on with Katie because Katie is so hypocritical and doesn't just own up to the things that she does. But this channel is awesome. It's great. I highly recommend you go check her out. Go subscribe to her. Tell her I sent you. You can tell she puts a lot of work into her videos from, you know, dressing, looking like her to the backgrounds in the videos. They're just so on point and just hilarious. It'll give you a good laugh. So in closing, there was a lot of stuff that was packed into this video. I just think that Katie needs to learn to just stop talking and stop doing things behind the scenes and truly just stop thinking about herself in this entire situation because at the end of the day she does have a family that she needs to look after and what she's doing is going to have an impact on her family and the way she treats people is just not okay her behavior is just so off the wall it's just unacceptable and the way she makes excuses for her behavior is just ridiculous but there is a lot more that goes to all of this this is again only a small fraction of the things that she has done and we will be getting into a part five um there's a lot of stuff that has happened in between this and now but until then i hope you guys enjoyed this video please like subscribe and share and i will see you all in my next video comment down below your thoughts and opinions on everything so far and i'll see you guys